Hey everybody, welcome back. This is going to be part two in my video series on setting up a uh, natting firewall slash proxy thing. Uh, hopefully my audio is okay. It looks like it's really loud for some reason. Anyway, um, so um, when we left off in the last video, we talked about the idea of building a software specification and a design document uh, going through the sort of requirements that you're going to go have. And hopefully you've done that. Um, if you have, love to see it. Post those in uh, the, the comments. Maybe give a link to uh, what you're working on, maybe somewhere that we can go take a look at it. Uh, just be interesting for us to go ahead and see that. So um, one of the things that we left off talking about last time was the idea of doing 12-factor design. And uh, a couple of the components that we want to think about is uh, actually getting to the components that are going to be um, making up our project. And before we do that, it's good to sort of keep a couple things in mind. And one of the first ones is going to be the idea of, of treating infrastructure and, and um, you know, managing systems as, as code. Uh, I'm super tired right now, so hopefully I won't be blabbering and sort of absent-minded. But, um, but yeah, right, treating infrastructure as code, doing um, um, our changes via code and keeping track of things. Um, as you would code, but, and that means version control, at least to me. So we're going to need to go set up some version control for our project. And the way that I like to go do this is I like to do it in two sections. Um, on a new Linux system, um, when we're starting off with scratch, we're sort of building the project. Um, and that's typically how I like to go do things. I think that's how most people will go do it uh, as well. You kind of start off with the basic simple kind of version of your project and just try to get it working uh, go through the different components but as you do what you want to do is you want to keep track of the changes that you make now the changes are going to go come in a couple pieces the software that you go install the configurations that you make and any sort of utility scripts that you use to get things set up um, and again there's a million different ways to go do this you could go use this with a uh, ansible playbook you could do this with salt stack um, in this case i'm going to do a very very simplified version of this and the reason why is this is going to be for a firewall so there's going to be basically two different ways that i want to be able to go deploy this right um, and neither one of those um, to my mind should require having a network available so this is going to be my router it's going to work as a uh, DHCP server, it's going to be provide the networking connectivity, uh, so forth and so on. So the uh, the first kind of way that I'm going to look at doing this is, uh, because I'm doing this on a Raspberry Pi, is potentially creating a disk image. So that's option one. And then the second thing they want to go do is I do want to go abstract it a little bit from the idea of having an image so that I can make this portable if I decide that I want to go install a new version uh, of Raspbian on my Raspberry Pi, uh, and I want to go start from a clean install, I should be able to go set this up and install it directly. Right? Fortunately, there is a very straightforward mechanism to do that, um, and that is packages. Right? So this is something I think gets a little bit overlooked in the modern sort of approach to systems administration, uh, and probably rightly so in a lot of cases. If you're looking at uh, things like Docker and such, typically you're using that to manage some kind of uh, service. So, you know, it makes sense to go ahead and have that launched in its own sort of container and get the benefits of process isolation and things like that. In this case, we're doing a router, and that router is basically going to be serving a single purpose, which is to route traffic uh, as well as provide these sort of ancillary services. So one option would be to do things like have your DHCP server in a Docker container, um, have your squid proxy in a Docker container, all of those would be fine. For me, I'm going to go keep things very simple, which is how I like to go start projects. And if I feel I need to go add more complexity to this down the road in order to get benefits and features, I'll do that. So in this scenario, what I want to go do is I want to go uh, start the project very simply. And that's what we're going to go look at today. So first thing that we want to go do is um, install a package called ETC Keeper. Um, now you don't need to do this. You could just do this with regular old Git if you'd like to, but 
ETC Keeper happens to be a package that's available and it's tied into your system and it makes life you know, fairly easy. So what ETC Keeper does is it basically puts your ETC directory into version control. Um, you can go use uh, Bazaar, uh, which is, you know, a sort of an also ran uh, in terms of version control. Some people still use it and like it, uh, but generally most people are using Git these days and you can go use it with Git as well. So the nice thing about ETC Keeper is uh, it will go create an initial baseline check-in for you, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, and then it has some hooks that tie into your package management. So in this case, uh, apt. Uh, so whenever you go install a new package, it also runs uh, a check-in uh, of any new files that have been installed. So it keeps track of your ETC directory for you, which means it's going to be very easy for you to keep track of the original versions of config files and then the versions that you end up with after making your changes, which is a nice thing to be able to go track. <clears throat> you can also go ahead and, and commit check-ins anytime that you would like uh, as well. And then the second thing that we want to go do is we want to go create a directory that we're going to basically use to create um, our setup and project. So I'm going to go create a, a directory, um, and that directory is going to be uh, some utility scripts uh, as well as uh, maybe original config files and um, it's going to be the the package um, that we're going to go create for uh, our uh, firewall. So um, I've already got a little bit of this done myself, but I want to go show you how this is going to go work generally. So I'm going to go switch over to uh, my uh, desktop. I'm going to actually switch over to this view, and I'm going to go make this uh, a little bit bigger. So let me go change my settings here. Go to appearance, change this to like. 28 and hopefully that'll be visible for you guys I'll make that large enough for you guys to be able to go ahead and see let me go move this over a little bit so you don't clip off the little output there <clears throat> anyway so should be more or less good to go i'm going to go make this a little bit bigger all right so we've got our, our Raspberry Pi here that I'm logged into. Um, I've got a, a VM uh, with Debian that I'm probably going to do most of this stuff on. I'll use that for testing, but um, I just happen to have this uh, you know, already. So I've already got ETC Keeper installed, but you know, basically all you want to go do is you just do you know, uh, sudo apt uh, get ETC Keeper. Uh, and then that would go ahead and install that for you. So it's already installed, and then we'll do a very long initial check-in of your um, ETC directory. Um, so if we go do cd etc etc keeper, we can do an ls, um, and you can go ahead and see the comp file. You can do vi on the etc keeper uh, dot conf, and then you can go see all the various different options in terms of like the version control system. So uh, it's doing. Uh, Git by default, and you can go see all the various different options that are, are set up for this. Right. So that's nice. It's put our etc directory into version control. So that's the first thing. So I can then go cd to my home directory, and I can go ahead and do make dir uh, new project. cd to new project. I can do a git init. So we do an ls-l, uh, we can now go see that we've got a .git directory, um, and that's basically anything that we go put into this uh, folder is going to be available for version control. So um, <clears throat> what you can do is you can go look at um, documentation about uh, Debian packages, and that's probably the place to, to start with this. Um, so for homework for you guys, I think it would be, and it doesn't, you don't have to go do this the same way. You could be using RPMs if you're doing, you know, Fedora. Uh, you could be using the package command if you're doing FreeBSD. You could be using Docker containers. You could be using Ansible. Whatever it is that you're going to be using to sort of manage the installation of uh, your configurations and the software to get this set up, um, do some reading on that. Make sure that you are relatively familiar with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, download a package, right? So... If we do apt get dash dash help, uh, there's a download option. So we can actually go ahead and download a package, right? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and download 
uh, let's say the cow say package, right? So I'm going to say apt get download cow say. Say, what are you doing? Why would you do this? Do an ls, and we can now see that we've got a Debian package uh, in the directory. Um, if I do a dpackage dash l, uh, I can go do uh, crep uh, bin utils bin something uh, bin utils right. Uh, so bin utils uh, are going to allow you to uh, work with binaries. Right, that's that's basically what this package is. Um, you know, it's going to have various different things you can go do. One of which is it's going to have the a b command. I always forget what it is. Let me see if I can go pull it up. Um, bin utils extract Debian package. Let's see. Uh, AR, right? You have the AR utility. All right, so you want to go install the bin utils package. Uh, and then we can go ahead and do AR X to go ex you know, basically extract this. So we can do AR uh, X. And then we have the package, which is going to be Kausei. We do an LS. So you can see that we now have a. Um, few different files. So I can actually go, well, let's go restructure this a little bit better. So rm star xz ls um, wn make dir r package. All right, my dog just wandered in. She's obviously in insanity mode. So I'm going to cd to our package. And I'm going to go ahead and do basically the same thing that I did before. Right. So now you can see that we've got um, a couple files here. We've got our Debian uh, binary, right, which is basically just a kind of version tracker. Um, we then have two tar files, right? So XC. I don't usually use XC format, so let's see. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. XC cat uh, data. Right, I can do the same thing for XZ cat. Ba, 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 what's the name of that? Control. All right, so now I've got my extracted files, and I can go ahead and do a tar XVF. Oops. So, all right, cool. Uh, we've got our uh, .user directory, right, which has the data and has all the kind of stuff for Kausei in it. Uh, and then we can go ahead and do control. And actually, we don't really need the data here uh, because basically all this is doing is it's recreating the directory structure of the files that we want to go install is, is all that's doing. So I'm going to do an rm-rf um, data user. Right. We can do a, a tar. Uh, X B F and I can do control. All right, so this is gonna go ahead and have uh, some files on it. More control. And this actually should be in the Debian directory. So we should do Mictor do an LS move control Debian. And then we can go ahead and you don't really need the MD fives. Um, and we can remove the tar file. And actually the WN binary as well. So 
now we've got a Debian directory, and inside the Debian directory, we've got one file, uh, which is the control file. And I think this is a decent way to kind of go about these things. I don't create Debian packages often enough that I have the, the structure memorized. So usually what I like to do is just kind of take an existing package uh, and then modify it so that I can go ahead and, and sort of use that. Uh, but I do want to sort of double check my work. So if I go back to the um, Debian maintainer's guide, was that? I thought I had that up. Debian You can go ahead and see the Debian uh, package structure. So underneath the Debian directory, we've got uh, pat control conf files, da -da, and conf files. What I probably should have done is it should look for a uh, it's a tar file with all the stuff in it because I bet that that exists. Uh, all right, so yeah, underneath the Debian directory, we got our control, um, and then we have some additional kind of things we can go ahead and use for you know the copyright and stuff. So these are basically the different um, kind of files that we have underneath the Debian directory. So if we go look at this, we can see that we've got our control. The control is basically going to be information about the file. So if we do like a, you know, an apt info uh, on something, this is basically what's going to be coming from that. <clears throat> and then we can go ahead and look at some additional kind of pieces. Um, you know, this is all the information about what is going to be in that control file. Um, you can specify a copyright. So if you, you know, using a GPL license or whatever it is, this really isn't going to matter for us because we're not distributing this package. We're just going to use this for ourselves. Um, you can go keep things like a change log, and um, then the the rules are basically how we're going to go, you know, build this thing. So that would matter if we were using software that we needed to go compile and have like a make file and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what we're going to be doing is is basically just some files that we're going to be installing, uh, some packages that we're going to require, uh, and then maybe some some post install scripts that we run. Uh, is more or less what this is going to be. So, yeah. So for us, it, we're going to be able to get away with this pretty easy. Um, it's going to be fairly straightforward. So um, if we go back and we look at our um, uh, files over here, doing LS, um, I can go CD to Debian. I can do VI control. And then I can go ahead and have... Oops, So I can do firewall, let's do this, netting, router, project, version is going to be 0 0.1, architecture is going to be all, maintainer is going to be nick, where's it come, installed size, I think this is the size in megs. It's not going to be 90, but it doesn't really matter. We'll just leave that. It's there to give you sort of an idea of how much space it's going to go consume. If you really care, you can put the whole package together, do, you know, um, do a DU on the directory structure, figure out how big it is, and we're going to be good to go. So we're not going to have a suggest. Um, this is going to be networking. Uh, priority is optional. Home page. Bernstein.com slash yeah whatever just leave it that and then description uh, the firewall project so most of this we don't really care about but what we do care is this line right here uh, because this line is going to be really, really helpful. It allows us to go ahead and say, these are the things that we're going to depend on that we need to already have installed in order for this to work, right? Uh, so IP table should be a base package. We shouldn't need to go do anything with that. Uh, but we are going to need to have some additional packages. Um, we're going to need to have uh, squid. 
um, we're going to need to have a DHCP program. Um, I'm going to go use DNS mask, I think, because that's going to give us a caching DNS uh, resolver uh, as well as a DHCP server, and that's pretty straightforward. So let's go start with those as our dependencies. Uh, I'm going to go do DNS mask, comma, squid. And now we basically have the very basics of a Debian package, right? Uh, we'll look at building this and stuff a little bit later on, but that's the basic idea uh, of how this is going to go ahead and work. Um, so we've got our control, and then what I'm probably going to do is we don't really need very much in the way of a pre-install script, but we probably do want to have a post-install script, right? So we can go ahead and do vi post install, and our post-install script Do most of the stuff to configure our system, right? And you can have other scripts as well. You can have a pre-install script, and then there's, um, yeah, there's a few other. Again, you can just go back to the documentation and look at the, the structure of your uh, package. So at this point, this is basically a meta package. So if you wanted to install like LAMP server, for example, like there might actually be that too. I hate the way that just a plain old app command uh, <laughs> this things out. Um, so, all right, maybe there's not, right? Let's do... I don't think it's, yeah, all right. Um, so let's do search meta. There's a good chance we'll have a meta package somewhere. All right. So you can see I've already actually got one. <laughs> That's been pre-done already. <clears throat> um, but it's, it's um, yeah, let me see if there's meta packages. So meta packages are really handy. You'll see this a lot of times for, uh, like there's probably like a Python meta package, which points to like Python 3. Um, you know, if you have a, a standard LAMP um, meta package, you'll see this on Ubuntu, for example. Basically, all it is is a package that requires MySQL and Apache. Um, so you install that one thing and it pulls down those other packages. That's basically what we've got set up right now. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a nice thing we can kind of use to kind of get started. Um, and we can go ahead and see the sort of structure that we have here. Um, I'll actually go back and show you guys the, well, let's go back one level first. Uh, we're in this location. We'll move the cow say. Make dir util. Right, so these are just going to be like, a, we'll make like a little package to go ahead and, you know, um, you know, create the, uh, the Debian package and, and maybe... Uh, increase the version or however you want to go do it. Um, so we'll put other stuff in here and then we'll probably also have underneath our package, let's do make dir our package etc because that's a thing that we're probably going to want to go do. And now, oops, don't have the package installed. Let's go sudo apt install tree. And we can then go ahead and basically list out the structure um, of our package, right? So we've got uh, our package has the Debian directory underneath that. It's got the control uh, file in there. It's got our post install. It's got our etc. And it's got another directory for things like utility scripts, right? So we've got a bunch of stuff in there now, right? Well, not a bunch. Got a couple things in there, but this is basically the skeleton structure for our package. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do uh, git add dot. <clears throat> and what this did is this basically uh, added all of the files uh, that we have um, in you know, this directory and everything underneath it. Right? Uh, so we can then do commit. Right? And we can say that this is going to be our initial commit. And 
I need to go change my editor because it's nano, which is annoying. Uh, yeah, you can see editor. What is it? Um, no. So, no, that's better. Um, anyway, so we've got our um, initial commit. Uh, we can now go ahead and use this as the sort of base of our, um, you know, structure. Um, as we go ahead and make changes to things, uh, we'll go ahead and write our scripts and configuration. We'll keep all of our copies of our files here. Uh, we can do all of our testing and development uh, for um, all of the different install that we want to go do. And as we make our changes, what we want to go do is we want to go track our revisions. Uh, that way, if we screw something up, we can go back it out. Um, we can also go ahead and see the the path that we took uh, in order to go ahead and get where we're, we're at. And because we're going to be using this sort of directory as our home base for the project, what it means is that we're not accidentally going to go ahead and create a, you know, a, a configuration file or a directory somewhere else, and that we're not going to, you know, um, have that be documented or tracked. So that's a big piece of what this is, is it's going to make sure that you're doing this correctly. <clears throat> and step one is going to be getting the project to work, right? So that's, that's obviously the simplest thing. We want to get this working verify that we have uh, at least our baseline level of configuration, which is going to be, you know, just a very simple natting uh, router, right? Nothing crazy, probably some IP tables rules, um, you know, uh, system control setting to go ahead and do natting, right? You know, do masquerading and forwarding. And that'll be our baseline. Um, once we have that configured, we can then get the initial pieces using DNS mask and all that kind of stuff. And we'll track all that as we kind of go. So uh, just to kind of give you an idea, I'll go to my firewall project directory, which is the one that I actually have. Do an LS dash L. Um, you can see that I've got the, um, um, started this off with the basic firewall uh, script. We don't really need that. Um, but I can go ahead and, and see that I've got my proxy NAT router zero one directory which is basically our Debian package. That's probably what I should have called the um, our project directory, but it's the same idea. So if I do a tree dot, you can see that it's a little bit more of a um, structured kind of file. So you can see here that I've got my Debian directory, I've got my control file, uh, I've got a post install, pre-install, and a pre-RM. Uh, basically, you can clean up and blow things away if you wanted to. Uh, I've got a Debian binary, uh, you know, that you can go set up if you want to go do that. I can actually get rid of that because we don't need it. Then we get the etc directory, which tracks some of the configuration files that we're going to want to go keep for this. So um, those will then get installed uh, in the equivalent locations, um, and you can, you know, track that. So that's the basic idea. It's, um, you know, a fairly simple uh, kind of structure. Um, we can go ahead and build our, our Debian package, and then we can go use this to go do all of our installs uh, and make sure that everything is is working and make it reproducible. Because one of the things I'm going to be doing is when we set up our VM, which is going to be used to mimic the configuration that we have here, um, I'm going to test this by installing the package, rebooting the system, and then it should work as a router. Um, so that's the that's the basic idea. Um, so we can go verify that I haven't left anything out of the package, uh, which means that in turn I have not, you know, missed anything that needs to be documented. Um, and by, you know, doing this on a clean slate and, and you know, verifying that I, I can do this through the package, it's going to be reproducible. Um, it's going to be something that we can go uh, use to create a new system if we need to. Um, and we can also, because this is going to be a Debian package, create our own, um, you know, personal package archive. Um, we can walk through that PPA and um, subscribe to any changes. So we can go ahead and have a VM that we are using. Um, we can then go ahead and have a um, development package that we go ahead and create, um, try things out, verify it, get it working there, um, install that on our VMs. Once we sort of have our, our release, our release would then be pushing this to our PPA, um, and you know, just like any other package, 
when you do your next update, uh, which on something like a firewall is not a bad idea to have done, you know, um, every night automatically with something like an unintended upgrade, um, we can then have that automatically installed. So that's hitting on a number of the different things that we have in terms of sort of good site reliability engineering kind of best practices. Uh, you want to go treat all, all of your configuration changes as code. Uh, you want to have everything be automated. You want to be able to have a pipeline that you can go ahead and use to uh, deploy things uh, automatically. So, you know, once we go ahead and sort of do the equivalent of a check-in, which would be pushing it to our PPA, that effectively would be a release. And this is a, you know, not a fancy pipeline, uh, but for the kind of stuff that we're doing with this, it's, you know, it's fine. And it sets up the basic concepts that you would use to do a more complicated project. So for a more complicated project, you might use more complicated tools, right? I still think Debian packages are good for a lot of stuff. Um, but for other things that might be using, you know, the same kind of process that we used to go create a directory that we're using to track our, you know, um, our, de our Docker image uh, with our Docker file and all the equivalent configurations. And we could go have some utility scripts that build uh, our, you know, Docker file and then, you know, commit this uh, to our repository, which then allows us to go pull down a new Docker image in production, whatever it is, right? You could be using playbooks. You could be using Terraform. You could be using, you know, um, deployment manager. There's a bunch of different ways to go do this, uh, but the concepts are more or less the same. It's just a question of what tool do you go use to implement it? And uh, honestly, the, the tools are just a question of sitting down, doing some reading, researching it a little bit, um, it's more the idea of what you should be doing and the sort of concepts of, you know, let's make sure that we track these changes. Let's sure make that we have a spec that we're adhering to so we know that we're not going, you know, uh, into the world of kind of crazy scope creep. And the next thing that we know, we're, we're setting up a, you know, a, a, a NATing router that does squid proxy, you know, proxy plus uh, next cloud with a media server on it. And, all. you know, it's fine if you want to do that. But that's a new project, right? <laughs> so you want to define what your project is, verify that you can do it, have a delivery date that you can you can commit to, and then if somebody says actually we want Nextcloud on that, say that's cool, but that's a new project. We need to start from scratch, right? Not necessarily in terms of all the work, but in terms of uh, negotiating when this is going to be due by, um, and what other things you're going to need to put on hold. So um, I think we'll leave it there for the video today. Um, but the quote unquote assignment, uh, for this, uh, this part of the class for you guys is if you're going to be using, uh, Debian, um, and you're going to be using, you know, dev packages, um, go look up the Debian, um, maintainers guide, which is basically what we're looking at. We're maintaining some software, it's very basic software. Uh, it's going to be a little shell script. Uh, you know, nothing too fancy, but read up on that, uh, get an idea of the basic structure, uh, maybe go watch some YouTube videos specifically on creating Debian packages. Um, if you're doing this with Red Hat, look at RPM. If you're doing this with a, you know, um, um, you know, some automation software, read up on the basics of that automation software. It's going to kind of be fairly similar to what the Debian format is might just be like JSON or, you know, YAML format instead. But it's going to be like a, a list of other things that you need in the state that it should be in. Right? Uh, and then it might say like, hey, you need to go have this script that gets run. You know, um, you know there's, there's more than one way it's going to cat, right? So whichever tool you feel like you want to go use. And there's some other things to think about here. Right, so I'm using a Debian package. The reason why I'm using a Debian package is I'm not in a position where I need to worry about, you know, having a bunch of skills on my resume, right? Um, you know, people ping me uh, about trying to go back to the corporate world, and I keep saying no. <laughs> uh, I, I teach, I have fun with it, I do my own projects. Um, I have other things where I play around with, you know, I like SaltStack for um, configuration management. I don't know why. I think it's mainly because it's a 
to pull instead of a push. Um, but if you're somebody who's starting off in your career and you're looking for a job, I think Debian's a good place to start with a package management format. I think that's not a terrible thing to, to be able to, to know how to do, start at the basics and work your way up. But I think there is an equally valid school of thought that says, go on your job board of choice. Look at the kind of jobs that you want to get and see what tools they're using, right? And maybe they're using Ansible. Ansible will be overkill for this. It doesn't completely make sense if you don't necessarily have a network available. Um, but you could do it with Ansible if you wanted to, right? <laughs> not going to not gonna hurt you. Um, so then you'd also be able to go put that on your resume. So I'm not, I, I mentioned at the beginning of this project, I'm not going to do this for you. What I'm doing is I'm giving you the building blocks in order to go do it. Um, and I'll show you how I kind of come up with things at the end. So, uh, so yeah, your assignment for the week is to basically look at what are the components that you defined in your spec. Um, we're going to want to make sure that those get listed as dependencies, whichever way that you go do it, and probably have, you know, a, uh, a minimal package built that will go install those things, right? So DNS mask, um, squid, any other kind of dependencies that you might want to go at. And there might be some more of them, right? Um, it doesn't necessarily be need, need to be the way that, that I'm doing it. Let your project be your own project. And yeah, that'll be it for the, for the week. Um, in the comments below, if you're using a, another package format, let me know why you picked that, right? So maybe just be as simple as I'm using BSD and I want to go use package or I want to go create, you know, an uh, entry in the porch tree. That's cool. That could be really fun. So let me know if you made a choice like that, what those choices were. Let me know if your uh, firewall project slash router is going to be more or less the same as what I'm doing or if there's other components to it that you want to go do. Um, yeah. So we'll start off with that. Um, let me know in the, in the comments what you end up with. And we'll see you guys next week with the next piece of this where we start to look at actually the configuration files that we want to go make for maybe uh, IP tables and some of the other kind of basic things. And we'll start to take a look at the script that uh, we're you know, putting together to go ahead and do our install. Right. Again, it doesn't need to be fancy. In fact, I think that at this stage, try to make everything as simple as humanly possible. And then we can build on top of that. And we can iterate uh, as we need to go add more complexity and features. Hopefully features without the complexity. Simple is always the best, right? Um, simple means that you can understand it. It means that you can convey what you're doing to other people. Um, it means that there's less complexity, which means there's less things to break. Um, and yeah, all that good stuff. So anyway, I'll leave you there. Uh, have a great rest of your week. Uh, see you guys in the next one. If you have not already, you know, feel free to, to like the, the video below. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. We talk about um, IT career stuff. This is a little sort of sidebar where I thought it'd be a little fun project that people could kind of follow along with and be some, uh, some good fodder for the old resume. Uh, because one of the things that you can go do at the end of this is take it and put it on GitHub and put all the stuff that you did on your resume. And now you can have a whole bunch of different things that you did that are, uh, you know, relevant to a real job. So have a great rest of your day. See you the next one. Take care.